This is the basketball show. What they gonna say next? Hello, you are watching the basketball show. I'm Joe Healy, alongside Shane the Hammer Heel, as always. Hammer, a big show to get through this week, and a very special guest, Josh Giddy. Oh yeah, bring that on! And a lot of basketball, so much basketball. I'm tired. You're tired. <laughs> well, we are very proudly brought to you by TCL Mobile and News Corp. Let's get straight into the show with a spotlight on the NBL Cup. Now that it's all wrapped up, what did you make of the tournament as a whole? Too long. Too long. I think it went too long. Really? Great concept. I love the concept. It's got to be here to stay. They've got to continue it on as we move forward, but we just can't do it for as long as we did. And I think they made their decision a while ago and well done to the Victorian government to be able to house everybody, but just too long. So what would you like to see changed? How long do you think it should be? Well, I think they're probably going to do it in segments and you might have different rounds like they do in the Greek Cup and the Italian Cup and mm -hmm. everything and play different games as the season goes on and then maybe you know, a week together or something like that. But they'll work that out. Keeping it to Victoria? No, no, no. Would you I like think, to see it moved around? Well, I think it's got to be supported by one of the states that's going to finance it, and this time mm -hmm. it was Victoria. But uh, who knows where it'll be next time. Let's spread it out. Give a little bit of love outside Melbourne as well. Something that's been talked about quite a lot is an NBL Cup MVP. Yep. Do you think we should have one, and who would it be if they did have one? Should have an MVP, no doubt about it. They should also have dunk contest, three-point yep. contest, and that's the perfect time to have an all-star game as well. Mm -hmm. Australians versus Americans, so let's get all that done. Uh, you'd have to go a, a flip of the coin between Bryce Cotton and Nathan Sobey. Nathan Sobey, yeah. Both, I love both very impressive. Cotton's exceptional. Yeah. Sobey's been great, but Cotton's my man. Practically carried the team and speaking yep. of we've got to say congratulations to the Perth Wildcats yep. seven and one for the NBL Cup they showed time and time again that you just can never write them off can Big you time. down 26 points at one stage uh in their last game in a dead rubber well, it was dead for the cup but still counted to the regular season exceptional on fire what did you make of the uh, family footage and the introductions they did at the start of the game? It was so nice. It's my favourite part. <laughs> you could tell they would be affected. They haven't seen their family for a month. And then on screen, sort of I was excited for them seeing their family. I love that sort of stuff. It's great. Families first. Well, that is one massive positive to come out of the NBL Cup. Something that cannot go uh, undiscussed is Melbourne United's form. They went four and four. Feels like they underachieved given their status, their depth and the fact that they were at home. No doubt. Jock Landau said they'd go undefeated. Now, they've had some injury problems. That was naive. I love the fact that he said it, but it was naive. It was never going to happen. Even threatened to shave my head. It was never going to happen. But they're, you know, they've got a few things they need to work out. And uh, to lose three in a row with a team they've got, even with the injury problems, um, they need to get Chris Golding more shots. They just don't. They don't play through him enough. He's a superstar. Never gets a second touch. Very rarely gets a second touch. All the shots he's taking are from court to court, off balance. They need to work to be able to play off him more because he's a great passer as well. They are still on top of the NBL ladder. Yep. Do you see them making amends? They take on Sydney on Friday night in the first of the new home and away fixtures? Nope. I think Sydney beat them. Really? They really do. I think Sydney beat them. Sydney are looking good of late, really come together as well. Martin back with another game as well. And, uh, yeah, no, I think it'll be an interesting game. It'd be great to see how many people get out at Kudos Bank Arena. First game in Sydney for, you know, they've only played one game all year. I know, we can't wait, can we? It'd be great. <laughs> it really will. It's going to be awesome. All right, let's get into our TCL Mobile starting five. The Coaches Challenge. Do we like it? Do we keep it? I love it. I think it's got to stay, but I don't. I'm hearing that maybe it's not. I think they're going to get rid of it. I think it's a revelation. I think it's good. I think I love the fact that you can go through it and see the different angles. You know, a lot of times on the commentary, we get it wrong. But I actually went into the room. Billy Mildenhall was there the other day and they explained one of the calls that we thought was completely wrong. And he said, we would have changed the initial. We wouldn't have blown the first foul. Yep. But because the first foul was blown, mm -hmm. then they couldn't make that change. So yep. it's interesting when you see it behind the scenes, but I think it's great. Yeah, hopefully they do manage to, uh, Need to, if not keep it for the rest of this season, perhaps implement it for next. Yep. The New Zealand Breakers have made some moves. They've brought in Will McDowell, White, Jeremy Kendall for the next couple of weeks and new import, Levi Randolph. What do you like? What do you like? What do you make of this move for the Breakers? I like the fact that they made the move now. 
They've played 13 games out of 36. There's plenty of time to come. But they couldn't wait until they played 20, 22 games because it would have been too late. And then they're going to need to sort of put these guys together and get them playing some minutes together so they uh, get some sort of camaraderie as well. But McDowell White will be interesting. He averaged only a couple of points a game in the G League. Highly touted, though. Big athlete. Played a little bit of time for the Sydney Kings. Um, you know, there was a lot of talk that he was going to play NBA. That hasn't come to fruition. This is his chance where he has to shine. Let's hope so. New import, Randolph as well. Hasn't actually landed yet, so still a couple of weeks of quarantine and all that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Six foot six, played in the G League. Has a really nice stroke on him. Okay, from uh, one stroker. I've seen you shoot the jump shot, so... <laughs> I pick, up, I pick up on these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and dropped 46 points as a G League season record last Ooh, year. So is, cap- is capable of going and making some big... They need D, though, as well. You know, they've got a lot of scorers, so let's hope highlight that he actually tapes, blends highlight tapes in. Don't always focus and on let's hope fans, so. he's in shape. <laughs> Get the calipers out, because we want skin folds from the time he arrives. Lamar Patterson. No Uber Eats. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ryan Brokoff made his debut yep. for South East Melbourne. They went three from three yep. to finish the NBL Cup, which was very impressive. What did you make of Ryan? I love Ryan Brockoff. He's going to be a star. That, but he, hasn't he, already, played. he already is a star. Hold on a second. No, no, he's going to be a star of our league. Okay. So he, he's Clarify. been a great player for a long time. and uh, But it's going to take him time. We said that on the show last week. It'll take him a month or so just to be able to get back. He hasn't played for a year. And then you have two weeks in quarantine, playing against guys that have played, you know, 12 to 15 games as well. So he's up against it. But I like the way they're just bringing him in slowly, 13 minutes in the first game. Um, they're looking good, South East Melbourne. They are so stacked. When they get guys like Gibson back as well and, and Sykes, they're really going to make a push this year to compete for the title. How do you feel if you are Kiefer Sykes right now? Nervous. <laughs> but he knows he's he, he knows he's good. But you do sit there. As an import, you're sort of sitting there saying, I want the team to win. But, geez, the guy that's replacing me as well. a local is playing really, really well. So uh, it'll probably, you know, increase his time of getting back quicker. 36ers, Brandon Paul played his first game. Yep. Um, 16 points in the first half, 25 overall. Yeah. What did you make of him? I think he looks really good. Great basketball body. You could say he's got a really good stroke as well. Um, good athlete. I think he's a perfect player for what they need. So and you think if he gets that in his first game, as time goes on, he starts to understand their sets. And playing with someone like Josh Giddy is going to help him. He would be coming in and saying, hallelujah, I've got a 6'8 point guard that's trying to make the NBA. I'm a scorer. He is going to make my job so much easier. But he looks good. Is he the answer to their problems or do they still need more? I think he's the answer to their problems, but I'm not sure that he's going to be the saviour to get them to the top four. They're going to win games. They get, they get a lot of talent. We saw the good and the bad um, in their latest game, up by 26 at one stage, but then they capitulated as well. And that might be due to the fact they haven't played together and all the rest of it. So they're going to continue to get better. They've got some firepower. All right, we've got to give a shout-out to the great man, Brian Gorgian, oh. 750 NBL games coached. And the win came against Melbourne United as well. He was absolutely pumped after that. How was he? And what about the fact that he pulled out the retro <laughs> retro red shoes? Hey, Love it. He thought he was a teenager. Gorge, just, you know, just <laughs> moving that, rubbing that dome and couldn't remember things. And But he's the guru. He really is. Best coach I've ever played for. Um, yeah, champion. Love seeing him get all the accolades that... He gets, he deserves it, and, um, you know, he's already turned Illawarra around, and let's see what they can do leading into the playoffs. You know Gorge quite well. Yep. Have you got any gold for us? Forgets everything. Oh, does like, he? He forgets everything. He can be in the middle of a scattering report, and he can say, now we've really got to shut down, you know, that guy, that shooter, you know, the, the that guy, the little guy, you know, the, <laughs> he, he can't remember names. Amazing. He forgets names, and... Uh, <laughs> I know how he's feeling. I'm starting to get there a little bit myself, but he's probably 10 times worse. He's forgotten shoes, computers, loses mobile phones and wallets. That's just the way he is. Oh, but uh, there is no better coach that we've seen in Australia. And well done, Gorge. Definitely a lot. Yeah, congratulations. Very quickly, as we wrap up our starting five, speaking of Gorge and I guess the boomers and coaching, Nathan Sobey, has he done enough to earn himself a, a spot back in that boomer side? He should be in the squad. There's no, he's not going to make the side, but he should be in the squad. He would be looking around and saying, how am I not in the squad ahead of X, Y, and Z? 
So he has to be there. He's earned that. And good on him for missing out and then going away and letting his actions do all the talking. Is, is it protocol for somebody to have been left out and then be brought in based on performance? I'm not sure what the protocol is, but it should be. Surely you're trying to pick the best players on form and you know how they're playing within our league. Um, so they should be adding him. He's does, been he, does he come in then as a plus one? Or if not, who does he replace? Um, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I think he's better than players on the squad. I'd have to have a look at it to say who, who yeah, that okay. is. But um, he should be there at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, you can bring him in as a replacement player or whatever, see how he is at camp. But Gorge really needs to be able to assess him in a camp environment, even though a lot of these locals aren't going to make it. OK, let's get into our favourite segment. This is Points Made. Let's welcome in Derek Rucker. D-Ruck, hello to you. I'll get straight to it. Lamar Patterson is coming back to Brisbane. Do you like this move? I do like it. I think the Bulls are taking a good risk here, although I thought they were starting to look pretty good with Orlando Johnson in the lineup. Um, but look, it's kind of strange because last season the Bulls were willing to take less of a risk and not dump those two imports they had. And Shane and I were all over them for that. So I guess from the Bullets' perspective, this is progress, Shane, because they're getting rid of Johnson and they're bringing in Lamar Patterson, who we really don't know what type of condition he's in. Well, that's where we disagree. We know what sort of condition in he's in. It's not good. And that's why New Zealand got rid of him. I'm glad they bit the bullet because they drew a line in the sand and said, not only are you injured, you're probably injured because you're carrying too much weight. You didn't carry that weight within the team, so we're going to send you packing. Patterson's probably happy because he fits back into Brisbane. Uh, it's probably going to be a good move because in six weeks' time, he'll probably be fit again and playing the sort yep. of basketball we expected and we saw at the end of last year. All right, guys, Patrick Ewing played the Don't You Know Who I Am card when he couldn't get into Madison Square Garden. He's Georgetown's head coach. He was there for an NCAA tournament, but he's obviously a Knicks legend. Hammer, have you ever played the Do You Not Know Who I Am card? This, this is such an American thing. This is, this is right up Derek Rucker's alley. This is him when he owned Townsville, walking up to the nightclub saying, do you know who I am? Where's my drink card? And here's my posse that's coming with me. That's not an Australian thing. We don't say that here in Australia. That is so untrue. I cannot believe you would say something like that. Cargo Bar, 2001, Shane Hill. <laughs> Do you know who I am? Never. Yes, we know who you are, Hammer. Come through with your crew. Hey, fair enough. Patrick Ewing is one of the all-time great New York Knicks, and this new generation has no respect for his elders, of which I am now a member. I'm an elder statesman now, Hammer, and I think guys that played in the past need to be shown their proper respect. I'm behind Pat Ewing. I'm with you, D-Ruck, here as well. And, Hammer, I'm surprised that you're saying that. I'm sure you've used it to try and get Never. into the cattery or something down there with your favourite Geelong <laughs> team, surely. No, always a red carpet. No need. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's move on. Uh, a Wizards caller this week came out and said that Ben Simmons was the most overrated player in the NBA. D-Ruck, to you first, what do you think about that? I think overrated is is too harsh. Look, he hasn't performed up to his talent level and his potential in the playoffs. But Ben Simmons is an all-star. He's one of the best players, one of the best two-way players in the NBA. Now, I'm giving him one more year, Shane, to prove that he is an all-star and he is an elite performer. And that will start in this year's playoffs. He needs to deliver. Well, I think the broadcast has tried to make headlines and it's probably worked because we're talking about it here in Australia um, right. I don't think he's overrated. I think the thing is that he's always going to be one of the best defenders in the competition. I just don't think he's a franchise player. I don't think you're building your team around him. I think he's the perfect complement to a franchise player. It's just what franchise player do you put him with to have a chance to be able to win a title? He's a superstar. He's an all-star. It's just not a franchise player. Well, he's playing well alongside Joel Embiid at the moment. Tobias Harris also playing well for Philly, so we'll see what happens there. Let's bring it back to the NBL now. The Breakers and Taipans are the two teams on the bottom of the ladder. Is it pretty much season over for them already, Hammer? Well, it was season over for Cairns about a month ago. They are just wasting Before, everyone's ouch. time right now. They are done God. and dusted. Their body language is a disaster. But uh, for New Zealand, they're probably not going to make the playoffs, but they've pulled the right strings. 
Right now is the time to get rid of Patterson and bring in a new import. Let's see what he does. They've brought in McDowell White. Let's see what he does as well. Uh, so they're making plays. They're giving themselves a chance. They've only played 13 out of 36 games. So it's no good them doing it after they've played 20 games. So let's evaluate them when they get their team together. Webster gets back from injury. Maybe they've got enough to be able to put it together in the second half. Look, New Zealand is going to have a very, very exciting small ball lineup when Corey Webster gets back into the mix. And they're bringing in Will McDowell-White, who we know is very talented. Had mixed results over in the NBA G League. But look, you're right. They have a very strong lineup in terms of where they can go potentially. They're not going to make the playoffs. But cans are cooked. I don't know what's going on up there. The culture looks shot. Look, I think Mike Kelly would probably be looking over his shoulder a little bit, and that never helps with the team trying to build some type of camaraderie and morale. So right now, Shane, I agree. New Zealand is a team that's a little bit safer, but cans they look toast. Focusing on the Hawks with our final question here. Dengadel, the form slump is continuing. d make your point. How on earth does he turn things around? He looks like he has no confidence, Shane. One of the things I look for with creative players like Dang Adele is how they're moving with the basketball. And you can see he's fumbly, he's stumbling. We know his shooting touch is way out of whack. And right now, Brian Gorsh has got to find a way within his system to get Adele good, easy touches upon first entering the game. And I think you'll see a guy with that type of talent. He'll bounce back, Shane. Well, he's highly paid. The expectations are that he's going to be a lot better than what he's delivering right now. So he's lacking a bit of confidence. But what I want to see from him, when you go zero for 15 and on the weekend he was zero for six, then you know you're not putting the ball in the hole. So you've got, to, you've got to affect the game in other ways. He is an athlete. He needs to defend. He needs to rebound. To only have six rebounds when you're zero from six from the field isn't good enough. He needs to show the hustle, the determination, the toughness. Because if he wants to send a message to NBA teams, he, he's not relying on his offense. He's relying that he can do the little things to make his team win, and they need him. Joe, why do you cut me off? Shane just went for two minutes. I was allowed 20 seconds. You're trying to ding me out. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> d -Ruck, next week I promise you can have some more time. That is points <laughs> made. Thank you so much. We'll chat to you again next week. Ding, ding. <laughs>
Connor spoke about it in a press conference. He kind of said the game's slowing down for me. I think that's what's really happened. It's it's kind of becoming more simple for me. And I think at the start I was really frantic and kind of going at full pace all the time. But now I'm kind of settling in and, and it's getting easier. But um, I think the big thing for me was my three-point shot. That's what I was working on a lot with with Jamie. I think I went 0 of 4 in one of the games in Brisbane. And I texted him the net and I was shooting maybe 10% for the year. And I said to him, i got to get in the gym with you. we got to work on this. And um, I, we've been working on it a lot. And, and I knew it was something I had to address and, and get better at. So um, that's probably the big thing for me is just being more consistent from, um, from three-point range. You obviously followed LaMelo Ball last year and now seeing the impact he's had in the NBA, it must excite you. And there's got to, you've got to see the parallels between the way he plays and your sort of poise and vision to be able to bring people into the game as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, LaMelo was, um, I mean, obviously didn't have the same kind of hype train that he had when he came into the NBL, but just the stuff he did when he was here was, was crazy for an 18 year old. And it's obviously carried on. He's got some, you know, exceptional talent and he, um, he displayed it in the NBL and then he was the third pick in the NBA. So it is cool to see that kind of we're coming through a similar pathway. We have similarities in our games and, um, you know, I think it shows on the court. So to see him doing so well in the NBA is really cool. There is also a lot of hype now around Josh Giddy. People are talking about you. Is that tough to handle? How are you coping with that? Uh, well, at the start, I used to love it. I used to always be on social media, kind of checking for my name and stuff. But as it, um, as it kind of went on, I kind of drowned it out. And I spoke to people. My, my dad was the big one, kind of just set my parents. We just it was always the message was always to stay grounded and kind of don't let it get to you because if you buy into all the hype and and all the stuff on social media it can really mess with you and i mean um i'm just focused on you know going out there and playing and i kind of let the media and, and those people talk and say what they want but um, i try not to you know look into it too much well we're all going to talk you up but you're going to get asked the questions mate face to face when you do some interviews with the nba teams and they're going to ask you why should we draft you yeah well, I think the big thing for me is I think I make guys around me better. And I think um, I'm a good, like players like playing with me because I get them the ball, you know, in the right spots at the right time. I, I kind of get have a good feel for when players want it and where they want it. And I think it, that's a positive to any team because to have a point guard that's, you know, a pass first and, and that's unselfish and that's willing to give the ball up, I think um, a lot of teams are going to like that. In the lead up to the draft, what are your plans? Are you going to head over to the States, join the Combines, or will you use the NBL as your sole platform before the draft? I actually haven't um, thought about that or spoke to my agent yet about that. So I've got to kind of sit down with him as we get close to the end of the season, kind of map out that whole thing about what I'm going to do leading up to the draft and where I'm going to be and what the workout schedule will look like. So um, once we get close to the end of the year, I'll probably figure that out. Well, mate, we're huge fans at the Basketball Show. We believe in you. We know you're going to be successful. And uh, if you put a little bit more time into your jump shot than texting my daughter, I reckon that uh, you have got big <laughs> things happening in your career, mate. So we want to we want to wish you luck. Appreciate it. Thanks, Hammer. And I will work on that jump shot. <laughs> Good on you, brother. Cheers, well done, Josh. Mate. Thanks, guys. So good to hear from Josh Giddy there, a future star, already a star, really. He talked about LaMelo Ball following in his, in his footsteps as an NBL next star and then going into the draft. I feel like we talk about LaMelo every week in terms of the numbers that he's putting up, the fact that he'll be rookie of the year. He yep. is just so impressive. LaMelo's been incredible. He really has. And, you know, we spoke about it before we went over there that he was really going to get engaged into the pick and roll game, so much more space. And I think Josh... He's going to follow in exactly the same footwork. Um, you know, the NBA scouts are going to see exactly what Lamelo's done, exactly what Josh is, is doing, and can that translate again into the NBA? I think it can. I think it's super exciting, and uh, lamello has been off the charts. It's incredible what he's been able to do for such a young kid. One thing in particular I picked up from Josh's chat is the fact that he said that he's now playing with the game so much slower which obviously just allows for him to have so much more control over things. Well, I felt like he was slow to start with. Like his poise that he's got and his vision to be able to see what's going on. He snake dribbles, he gets it in the right spot, makes passes the last time. He threw a couple of passes on the weekend with his left hand that were skip passes 
that just looked like it was with his preferred hand. And when you've got that sort of length that he's got, the size, it changes the angles of those plays that you make as well. I mean, he's, he's going to be a star in the NBA. Be so interested to see what number he goes. We can't wait. I'm so happy for him as well. And the, and the whole family, just such a great family, the Giddy family. No, it is really exciting. Uh, one more very quickly on Lamelo. Did you see the other day MJ sitting courtside? Yeah. How intimidating must that be? I mean, it's just I say that because the 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 arenas aren't stacked with fans. I feel like he, he'd say something and you'd hear it, and well, that just must be I yeah, don't know, overwhelming it, or exciting or I don't know. But inspiring too. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you get an opportunity to to ball in front of the greatest player of all time that owns the club. Like that, if you're not going 110% the whole time, you shouldn't be playing basketball. So it's great being able to roll it out. And, uh, you know, I read some really positive comments from Jordan as well about LaMelo Ball. They, like, at three now, they've shown that they got a steal. Yeah, two players with very big futures, that's for sure. Let's get into our top five plays of the week from the NBL Cup. Kicking things off this week, it's Phoenix captain Mitch Creek. He dropped 31 points in their win over United and put in the hard yards in D as well. There he is on the defensive end. Doing everything, Mitch Creek. Game on the line. He scores at one end and thwarts Melbourne at the other. Brilliant. At four, how's this from Mojave King? Oh! Oh! Mojave King has got me out my seat. <laughs> Play the young man. I'm literally out of my seat. It's another sequence of events at number three. Yes, I know, I'm cheating this week, but Nathan Sobey's diving effort to save the possession was seriously impressive, as was the way he finished it off. Eyes are starting to light up here, Nathan Sobey. Two, one, shabam! My goodness. He had that look in his eye. I can bring it home from here. For all money, the Taipans and Breakers should have been going to overtime after Cam Oliver's block on Ty Webster. However, Tom Abercrombie had other ideas. Abercrombie! Yes! Tom Abercrombie! Stand to feet in the face! And Tom Abercrombie! New Zealand through and through! Delivers when his team needed it most! That was awesome, but you can't go past Bryce Cotton at number one. He led the Wildcats to the NBL Cup and they overturned a 26-point deficit to cap off the tournament with a win over the 36ers. Here he is firing the three, knocking it down as well. Oh, he's a freak. He's the best in the business. He's a freak. And, and he does it when his team needs it. He does it in playoffs year after year. Oh, class act. Are you kidding? You go with a whole team for a whole half and Thomas Abercrombie hits a game winner like that, can't get number one. Not good. Oh, it could have gone either way. I'm a, I'm a Bryce Cotton Wildcats fan. Keeping Perth fans happy again, patronising them. Well, you don't. Someone's no, don't. got to. Notable yeah. mentions very quickly. Mitch McCarron's dime to yep. Jock Landau, unreal. Yeah. And Sam Froling's dunk. Jordy Hunter could have probably closed out better, but the dunk was pretty impressive. Okay, take that. All right, that's all we've got time for. We'll see you again next week on The Basketball Show. This is a co-production by News Corp Australia and Closer Sports.